It's Tuesday, July 13th, and this is your Barbados Today Evening News Update. Grief-stricken loved ones of Janice Mitchell, one of the three victims in Saturday's house fire at First Avenue Chapman Lane, St. Michael, are trying to come to terms with their loss. This morning, the 58-year-old who suffered severe burns succumbed to her injuries while undergoing treatment at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. When a Barbados Today team visited the community today, her boyfriend, Anthony Amory, was trying to hold back the tears as he described his final moments with his partner. We had a hardship there, yeah. Queen Elizabeth Hospital landing all the time. And the only time we get to see she was yesterday, because they understand I couldn't go unless you got a, a thing to go in. Mm-hmm. So you saw her yesterday? Yeah. And she can talk. She can talk to me. But then if I talk, she can understand what I'm saying, but she can't, she can't talk to me. So she had her shoe eyes open and stuff? No, I shut down. See, I see her burn up. Hands. And down there the worst. All blood and toes. I got sound like a clothespin, clip on up on the toe. Oh yeah, like I said, she was well, happy when I said she yesterday. Mm-hmm. All these different machines got their hook up petition all kind of thing. You are hoping for the situation to be different though? I'm looking for she to come. Turn into today's COVID-19 update, 104 people are currently in isolation as the country battles to contain a spike in positive cases. Latest figures show 10 people tested positive for the viral illness on Monday. Three females and seven males from the 1,086 tests conducted by the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory. This brings the overall total of confirmed COVID cases to 4,196. 48 people have died from the virus. To date, the lab has carried out 195,982 tests. There have been 9,283 first doses administered on the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, and 72,672 people have received second doses of the vaccine. Those who are fully vaccinated represent 26.8% of the population. From 11 p.m., a two-week national curfew will take effect and several activities across the island have been curtailed as authorities attempt to restrict movement to contain a rise in new coronavirus infections. Summer camps are among those activities on hold, but the move is not sitting well with some camp directors. In an interview with Barbados Today, Deborah Branker, one camp director, described the move as surprising and harsh on camp directors who have invested time, energy and money into their camps. But yeah, I do think overall that I, I mean, most of the camps are outdoors. They're small. You know, they're not large camps. And um, I just, I just thought it was, it was, I thought it was a bit mean, like without really thinking what how this is going to impact. Because the restaurants can still operate, the churches can still operate, people who have weddings can still operate. It seems that they're very one-sided when they're doing these, you know, they impact one and they totally discard the others. Director of Step It Up Academia, Tracy Agar Thompson, said uncertainty now hangs over her operation as she awaits the outcome of the next two weeks. With this, it brings about so much uncertainty among parents that sign up and tentative sign up now is like really sketchy and... If you're going to do camp, you have to, before you start collecting funds for camp, you have to start putting money into planning for camp. So you have to pay for the advertising, whether it's, you know, showing something like Barbara's Children's Directory, if you're going to put up a banner, all of those things cost. Meanwhile, Director of Light Learning Centre, Billboard Murrell, says the postponement will impact the planned curriculum for students who he says have already been severely impacted by the disruptions to the school term caused by COVID-19. And it's, it, it significantly impacts especially those that have challenges. So our programme this year, rather than focusing on preparation for the next class for the upcoming September term, our preparation was we were, we were going to focus on cementing what the children would have done in the last term and a lot of what they would have missed because they would have missed a lot. They've only got a half a term basically face to face. So it was a lot of revisionary work and trying to prepare and cement what they thought in the previous class so that when children start their new term in September, 
that they will be up to speed already. There's regional and international news after this short break. news ahead of the July 26 election, the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association is expressing grave concern about the recent increase in mass crowd campaign events. More on this report from HCS News. President of the SLMDA, Dr. Merle Clark, is horrified at the disregard of COVID-19 prevention and control protocols during campaign events amid the pandemic. Politicians and supporters of the respective parties have been hitting the campaign trail to persuade voters as the July 26 general election dates draw nigh. Over the weekend, a number of mass crowd events were held throughout the country with motorcades and rallies. The SLMDA is concerned about possible spread of COVID-19, particularly with the emergence of very contagious strains of the virus. We are living through a pandemic. The fact that political parties think that trying to outdo each other in terms of the numbers of solutions unmasked or inadequately masked, some of them inebriated, just parading in the streets, speaking loudly. So it, it's, it is horrifying. We would like to call on all parties involved and our fellow citizens in case we do not understand it, that we are still living through a pandemic. On the international front, at least 64 people have been killed in a fire at the coronavirus isolation ward of a hospital in Iraq. It's the second deadly blaze in a COVID-19 unit in three months, state news agency INA said on Tuesday. More in this report from Al Jazeera News. This was the Al Hussein Hospital in southern Iraq. Now, much of it burnt to the ground. These wards were set up for coronavirus patients. They only opened three months ago to help cope with the pandemic. The charred remains of victims are carried out in body bags, but families continue to search the debris for any trace of their loved ones. The front door was burning and the back door was closed, so people were not able to get out. We managed to take some people out, but they suffer from critical conditions and the rest of them burnt and died. This was a scene as the fire tore through the hospital. Fire crews tackling the flames. What happened tonight at the Hussein Hospital is a catastrophe. That's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbetistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.